polls this election day have been open for 45 minutes as we are well underway as people head to the polls for the midterms. That's right. We have Sean Donahue. He's a political science expert at UB. He's with us this morning to chat about some of the big races that we are watching. First of all, Sean, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. As folks get ready to head to the polls, maybe they're getting ready to head out the door now. What is one thing that you are watching for today? Uh, the thing that I'm going to be watching for is turnout. Um, particularly in the governor's race. So, um, you know, there are a lot more Democrats that live in New York than Republicans. Um, but if they don't turn out, uh, that is to the benefit of Congressman Zeldin in the race and to the detriment of Governor Hochul. Sean, particular areas in that race, obviously the more urban areas of New York City uh, would have higher concentration of Democratic voters, some of the more rural areas of the state, a higher concentration of Republican voters. As you look at turnout in that race, are there any particular areas, counties that you're paying close attention to? Well, I would be looking at, um, particularly in New York City, to see what the turnout is in, uh, in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan. Um, but also, um, kind of some of the urban cores in Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Albany to see if those voters are turning out as well. Um, another county I'd um, be watching is Tompkins County, which is hmm. where Ithaca is, Cornell. Um, it's a kind of a college town county. Uh, that would tell me if, uh, if we're having a good turnout among young voters. Okay. Um, it seems like the governor's race might be a little bit closer than anyone would have guessed about six months ago. We know that gap has been closing between Lee Zeldin and uh, Governor Hochul. Do you think Zeldin's done enough to overcome the voter enrollment disadvantage that Republicans are facing? Well, I think Zeldin is uh, Zeldin and his campaign and allies have done probably as much as they can do. Um, you know, he's had uh, pretty strong fundraising, really stayed on message um, on the issues of crime and uh, and taxes and costs. Um, but it's a question of uh, you know, given that the Democratic advantage is so large in New York, um, is it going to be possible to overcome it? We'll see tonight. Lastly, Sean, from a national perspective, there may be a shift in power. Uh, some people predicting that both the House and Senate uh, go from blue to red. If that does happen, if Republicans take control of both houses uh, of the Capitol building in Washington, how do you think that changes the outlook of the remainder of Joe Biden's term? Well, I think it depends on if it's one house or two houses. So um, Democrats uh, face a really tough challenge in, in keeping the House. So, you know, they only have a five seat majority. And uh, in a midterm election, the president's party usually loses a lot more seats than that. Uh, if they lose the House, I think you can expect uh, a lot of investigations, um, potentially issues with the debt ceiling. Um, if they also lose the Senate, um, that's probably a little bit more consequential because that will slow down or even grind to a halt any of President Biden's uh, judicial and uh, other nominees coming through the Senate. All right, Sean Donahue uh, from UB, thanks so much for being with us. You'll be back with us later on tonight, uh, I know, as we continue our election coverage. Enjoy watching what happens, Sean. Pleasure to join you this morning. All right, switching gears now.